On this week's episode, we finally get hauled out, which was a bit stressful for us. We go to a food truck festival here in PE, which was super cool. And we run into a bit of a problem, which puts a dampener on us. It's haul out day. Aren't you excited, Annie? I'm a little nervous, hoping that the wind will hold up. If the wind holds up, then we'll be fine. Jeremy only comes out when it's good weather, so we knew we were A-OK -okay for a haul out. Ricky and I were super stressed for this haul out as you see the difference in the size of the crane from episode 3 to this episode but it was handled like a pro so we had no stress afterwards. Ricky was flying the drone to get some sweet footage of us getting hauled out. Drone flying and the crane coming out, enough stress for one day. <laughs> Since we've been hauled out, we got in Tandaza to pressure wash the hull for us and make sure that she was nice and clean. Ricky got on it as well. So what I've been doing here is using that pressure washer that we're washing the hull with. And I took the same thing and I pressure washed that top here. And I mean, that's like 200 bar that that machine's pushing. That's like 3,500 PSI. So I took all of that out with that machine and I'm gonna take out the rest. Now, the rest of the white. So what it looks like, the gray coat wasn't sanded down before they put the white. And that's why all the white's coming off. So we'll get that taken off and then we'll do white again. I'll wash the engine too. I mean, these are diesel engines we usually on on commercial machines and that the guys power wash the engines straight so there's the top it was all corroded and i just power washed all of that and you can see there all that oxidation of the aluminium came off and uh, yes you can power wash your engine obviously you must know what you're doing and um so stay away from the alternator and the starter and that and you can try avoid electronics so these are not electrical in injection so if it, your engines are electrical injection like in common petrol engines i'd avoid doing that we're just giving it the first wash and the anti-fouling doesn't seem to be too thick in some places in other places there's quite a bit but um we can check here on this side that's what our anodes look like so there's not much left of that so we'll definitely be replacing them and maybe even looking into adding some in different places that one up there looks fine but she stays mostly out of the water the one on this right also pretty called it much a day and that's what the hull looks like from the bottom and um, we're thinking possibly we'll go red on the lower half and uh, just for aesthetics put a top layer of blue because um, we don't like the red too much but um, not looking too bad. We'll start sanding now. It's lunchtime, so we're just gonna grab something to eat and then 
we'll start sanding the whole hull to take new new anti fouling. In South Africa we've got this regulation that the bottom side of the hull must be painted with a visible colour. But um, I don't like the orange sticking out here so we'll paint that top edge with some white. Get some so we just got ya and the place looks pretty cool. Let me show you what it looks like. It's like jam packed. Check at everyone. And everyone's kind of like there's some beads. Shoot. It's a beautiful mountain. in the morning it's quite warm already and um, I'm busy I'm gonna take out that out take that out today that's where our new galley is gonna be and uh, they'll do some work in the in the bathroom and uh, as you can hear the guys are standing outside So after two hours of cutting and we got the area out, let me show you. So that's what it looks like and that's where our new galley will be installed. We'll get some new uh, braces there for the back and we'll maybe put some foam between the, the outer glass for rigidity and uh, we'll put a couple of uprights which will act as braces and that's it. It was time to sand down the hull and get rid of all that anti-fouling. This is at least going to take us a week. That's how you get on the boat. <laughs> Come, we must pull up. I can't get up. I can get up, yeah. You gotta pull yourself up. We'll have to work on that. All was going well until we had found out our floors had delaminated. Ricky had already moved the wood from the cabins and we just had the galley and our head lift, which the wood had not delaminated, which was great. We were super demotivated at this stage. Um, this would this would set us back another two weeks because now we would have to replace the floors. So Ricky hopped on the phone with his trusted boat builder and he gave us the, the best advice and said, hey, push through. After this whole mess, we decided why not go watch a movie and get some popcorn. I mean with the lights only are green but on the wheels on the back. It means only the back wheels are touching the ground. Oh, You're driving so fast. <laughs> mind the hole. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the hole. That's why you have a 4x4. Four four. Hey, hey, hey. I shouldn't say yield, my bad. <laughs> Oh, Simone cheers me up every time she drives. I was a bit negative today. As you guys could see, we had to bloody rip out all our floors. Well, not all our floors, we've taken three hours already. So I was pretty negative about that. But um, after speaking to my, my go-to yacht builder, um, all was good. And um, I just took a moment away from it and got back in there and um, tomorrow everything will be fine and we'll continue with building up our uh, our dreams and because um, we want to go sailing and we're determined to do it so we'll do that so Simone's driving today because I wasn't feeling feeling so so good 
Uh, it's just like enough. I should have chill. So my love stepped in and and took the wheel. <laughs> We're gonna go watch a movie tonight. It's seven o'clock. Perfect. Trying to find us a really good parking, which consisted of us going in circles for quite a while. We're going to watch a movie. I think we're gonna watch the movie in the parking lot too much taking so long. I eventually found us a really good parking though. So we're off to go get some um, silicone and then we're gonna get some sandpaper because we need sandpaper. First stop was our sandpaper. We're getting some sandpaper from these guys. These guys like cut literally anything you want. So the same stuff at <laughs> warehouse was <laughs> like five five discs for like eighty bucks. It's like four and fifty a disc. Yeah. Then we stopped at Sika for some silicone and Sondo for some insulation foam. So yeah. So that's the base plate. What we've pretty much done. And we put the bolts through. And on the top side we've pretty much done the same as we sealed underneath them. We'll attach the new base plate. It's Seeker Flex uh, 921 uh, i Since epoxy is meant to be mixed in a well ventilated area, I decided outside would be the perfect place. Yesterday Simone and I took off all the deck fittings, so the track and the blocks and that and um, we just filled them with that epoxy filler so it's really, it's pretty soft so even though it's not perfectly full um, we're not too worried because we're going to re-drill all these holes and um, we'll reinstall everything it's just to get everything, the whole deck completely clean so that when we do the top coat that's going to come on here, that there's no deck fittings and we've got to worry about cutting and doing all of that. So that will just make it easier. So we took all that and we sealed all the railing through bolts from the bottom and from the top. And um, we use a Seeker Flex product, it's a 219i. And um, a lot of people say, oh no, you shouldn't use that, you should use butyl tape. And obviously butyl tape will last a bit longer, but um, the Seeker Flex will give us like 10 years. That's what the Seeker guy said, and so we're pretty happy with 10 years. We're just pretty much sealing all the little holes that, that go through the deck, so that we don't have to worry about water going through anyway. That's our biggest concern is that we get little drips once we have the new headline or once we get the boats finished and there's little drips everywhere. That's the last thing we want. So everything's sealed up and it's looking good. So at the moment I'm just sanding. That epoxy leaves like a, a glossy residue and that residue has, has a wax release on it. So if you don't sand it down and you apply something it just pulls off. So we're just sanding that down so that we don't forget by any chance at a later stage that we that we did sand it down. So they're pretty much all filled up and that if the filler that we used was at uh, micro bubbles, micro balloons, like little glass spheres. And so it's really light to sand down. It's not structural, it's purely just a, a fairing compound. And the reason we use it to fill is so that it's easy afterwards just to open all the holes again and fit it. Because we're just using it as a temporary base, we're not sealing forever. Bad news that we got was um, there's a bit of a 
kind of, it wasn't really a soft spot, but when I stuck my hand in the inspection hatches over here, um, there was, I stuck my hand underneath and I felt the plywood and it felt a little loose. So I pulled it off and pieces like this come off, came off, completely dry. But what this told me was that this, this plywood had gotten wet once and so it had wet, once, it, once the, the marine ply is wet, um, it can take water for quite a while and that, so it obviously did. And uh, once it dried up, everything just split apart. That means I've got no structural strength in this area. And I could simply just cut a new section and fit it in to be perfectly fine because the rest of the ply here is quite solid. But um, I'm leaning towards just taking out the ply and uh, fitting in a new floor and epoxying everything in again uh, with some, some glass. Some, uh, it's going to be a bi-axle uh, woven, which will be a lot stronger than the current stuff is and then at least I'll know that it's new. And um, I was planning on making bigger inspection hatches anyway. And as you can hear, we're still busy sanding the hole. Uh, luckily, Tandaza and Moses have, have been a big help with doing that while I get the inside done. And uh, yeah, let me show you the floors that we've taken out. We've taken out that, the front cabin. We've taken out the rear cabin. We didn't actually need to take out the floors, but what we do plan is to prep the boat already. If at a later stage we do want to put in two engines, um, so that to already be through. But that also uh, ran some FEA analysis, which so is like a finite element analysis, and tells us structural integrity. And I put some load testings on the outside, and so I determined where we need to put in some new bulkheads for me to remove this area. So we'll be putting foam on that side. So it's a high density uh, NIDA core foam. Um, I'll show you a sample. Once we start doing it, I'll show you a sample of what it looks like. And um, so at the moment, if I put my foot against this, and you know, I'm pushing pretty hard on it, but you can see a slight deflection on it. So it doesn't mean the fiberglass is not strong because this fiberglass here is like 10 layers thick. It's really, really thick. But um, there's no rigidity to it, or not as much rigidity to it. By adding the, 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 the NIDA core layer to it, we'll increase the stiffness factor to that easily to three, four, and then we'll have two biaxial layers over it. And we'll do that the same to, to, to the inner hole and the outer hole. We'll stiffen them both up, and then we'll have the, the, um, the new bulkheads that we're gonna put, or shorter bulkheads coming through, and to stiffen that up. And then we'll put in, put in the, new, the new bed up top, which will even stiffen it up more because it's only going to have a, ha a hatch over here, and the rest will stiffen up on the sides, and we'll glass every, everything will be glassed in. And probably most of this we'll build out of NIDA core instead of building out of ply, and then we'll just build the other areas out of ply. Um, those, these are these are our buoyancy tanks. So, so they're not just here for structural rigidity, they're actually part of the flotation of the boat. These boats were built like that. So there's one on this side and one on the other side. So we'll, we'll be leaving them in. Um, I don't want to fill too much of that, it's just because it's quite a bit of work to take them out and then you'd have to add more bulkheads and just for a little bit of space gain, it wouldn't be worth it. Um, but yeah, once we've done all of this boxing in and fitting the area for the engine and stiffening up that, those holes then will be Okay. These floors, what a damn. It's all part of it and it's part of the building, I guess. It's been a little emotional. But we'll get through it and uh, reap the rewards later. Stay tuned till next week's episode when we do some CPR and Ricky thinks it's a good idea to buy 7 kgs of squid. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already. And like our Facebook pages, Instagrams, Twitter accounts. Any donations towards our patrons account will be appreciated as now we have a floor to replace. <laughs> Thanks so much for the support guys. We truly appreciate it. Lots of love.